part of the message on counterfeits. Tonight, I've had a lot of people ask about it, and uh, so here we go. Uh, here in the, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and in verse number uh, 5, or look at verse 4. Matthew 24 and verse number 4. Bible said, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So evidently there's some kind of a, there's some kind of risk that you can be deceived, or he wouldn't have said that. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Last I heard, there's 1,100 of them in the world alive today, a few years ago, that claim to be Jesus Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And he goes on in there talking about the, the great tribulation. So the point is, verse 5, the Lord said in the last days, there'd be people come uh, that would look like him, sound like him, act like him, dress like him, and if you didn't have the Lord's Spirit in you, you'd think it was him. And so tonight, with that thought in mind, I'll bring the message on the subject, part two of counterfeits. Last week, or week before last, we talked about uh, the devil has a counterfeit for everything that God has. Doesn't matter what it is, uh, you, you, I can show you tonight, anything you mention that God does, the devil has a counterfeit, a look-alike, an imitation, uh, a fake, a, a fake, as we would call it. And uh, I talked about reincarnation for resurrection. The Bible tonight does not teach uh, reincarnation. It teaches resurrection. And that's a counterfeit. And then we talked about familiar spirits for the Holy Spirit. We talked about that the other night. And uh, we showed you in the Bible where that there's one Holy Spirit and then there's a bunch of familiar spirits. And then we talked about faith healing for divine healing. The Bible teaches divine healing. The counterfeit is faith healing. And we went over that thing about how that we we get accused sometimes as Baptists of not believing in healing. We believe in healing. We don't believe in healers. And there's a major difference in that. So we talked about that. And so tonight, I'm going to give you a few more of these. May not get to all of them. But let me start off by saying this. We're going to talk about man's word for God's word. God has a word, the Bible. So it would be natural that the devil would counterfeit man's word and substitute it for God's Word. Now, um, I, I, I mentioned some things the other day, and uh, I know that there are people tonight that believe everything they hear in college, everything they hear on TV, people say, oh, I know it's true, heard it on TV. Uh, the, the Discovery Channel did a special, and they said that they found these rocks, and these rocks said that there was water on Mars, or in these rocks, that is a hundred billion years old, and they found dinosaur fossils from um, from a million BC, and so it must be true. Now, you know what somebody like that is? They're taking man's word for God's word. Somebody get on there and they'll say, "Well, we found the evolutionary fossils, and we found these fossils, and these things have turned into human beings, and we found evidence of it." You know what you're doing? You're taking man's word. Instead of God's word. You're taking a counterfeit, buddy. Uh, uh, that's one of my counterfeits. I probably won't have time to get to. Evolution for creation. That's a counterfeit. The Bible teaches creation. The Bible does not teach evolution. Do you hear me tonight? The Bible does not teach evolution at all. Now, when you talk about, somebody said, well, this little kid was this big, and next time I saw it, it was that big. That proves evolution. If that's your definition of evolution, there is such a thing. But if you're talking about a squirrel turning into a monkey, and a monkey turning into a man, there's no such thing as that. They don't change species. Right? They don't grow arms and legs, and they don't, uh, you know, change into another form of animal. As a matter of fact, it won't even work when you try to breed them. And God fixed it so that everything brings forth after its own kind. I'm going to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a day of the great ripoff of evolution for creation. Don't you be intimidated. Don't you be scared. 
You young people here tonight, don't you be a bit afraid to tell them that you believe the Bible and not evolution. The Bible don't teach evolution. I heard a preacher said one time, and I had a deacon tell me to my face. He said, now Danny, he said, I believe in, in creation, but I believe that God used evolution, and that's how He created us. He created the rocks and let them turn into... Now, you know what He's doing? He's saying, I'm scared to death of science, and I'm intimidated, and I'm scared of them, so I can't say they're wrong, so I'm going to try to weave science into the Bible and sort of make them both right. And He's a chicken and a compromiser. And I'm as a deacon in a Baptist church. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. I, I, without batting an eye, I mean, you can say I'm uneducated, Hill Billy, whatever you want to. Without batting an eye, I can tell you that I believe in creation. God said there it is and there it was. And God said, brother, let there be and there was. God said, you say, well, that's awful simple. You're absolutely right. Uh, evolution is a counterfeit for creation. Man's word for God's word. And I'm going to tell you something else. Might as well get on it while we're on this point about man's word for God's word. A new Bible that says something different from the old Bible is also a substitute of man's word for God's word. A man said one night, he told me, I, I used to preach with him on the street. And he used to preach over that trade lot in Marion years ago. And he started going to a Bible college near here, 30, 40, 50 miles from here. And uh, I run into him and he said, Boy, that taught me a lot since I've been in seminary in Bible college. And I said, what's that, brother? And uh, that boy looked at me. He said, they told us. He said, our professor told us. He said, well, we're going to preach on something like uh, John 3 or First John 2 or something like that. They told us that we're supposed to get out five versions of the Bible and we're supposed to read our text in all those five and whichever one of those versions fits the view of how we're wanting to present this uh, uh, verse, we're supposed to use that verse. And say, I'm reading out of the NIV tonight, or I'm reading out of the New American Standard Version tonight, or I'm reading out, ladies and gentlemen, that substitute God, a man's word for God's word. And if you don't think this is a problem tonight, I challenge anybody in here. You get your phone book, the Burke County phone book, tomorrow. And you start calling pastors in this town. Don't tell them I said to them. Don't tell them where you're from. But you start telling them. You start asking them a question. And say, Pastor, do you believe the Bible? And 100% of them will say yes. And then you'll say, which Bible? And they'll say, well, I'm not sure I understand the question. And then you'll say, well, there's a lot of different ones. There's the NIV. There's the new ASV. There's the RSV. There's the new RSV. There's the ASV. There's the LEB. There's the LIB. There's a, they might be the HIV version. I don't know. I mean, I, I, that's the queer. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, listen, they, you, there's all kinds of versions of the Bible. And then you watch them say, well, uh, we believe that, uh, we believe that all of them are God word in so far as they are translated correctly. And then you'll say, do you mean to tell me is there one book on earth that is perfect and the Word of God? And they'll say, oh no, oh no, they only have translations. We, are, we get them from the original Greek and only you pen that down. And most preachers in this town believe that only the original Greek and Hebrew were past tense were inspired and all we have now is copies of copies of copies of copies that are pretty good, 90% correct and the professors have to tell us which 10% ain't. And I'm going to tell you this evening brother, no we don't believe that. You know what we believe? We believe that we have God's Word. We believe that book right there is the Word of the living God. And I'm going to tell you what we believe. We believe at this church that when that book says something, that's it. I don't care what nobody else said. It don't matter if you had a dream. I don't care if you had a vision. I don't care if 17 angels come in your bedroom at night and told you something else. When that old King James Bible said it, brother, you can take it to the bank. It'll stand when the world's on fire. Let's believe that's God's Word. Say amen right there.
Amen. You know, a lot of these preachers remind me of Curly on the Three Stooges. I, I, you know, they come up, Mo come up one time and he said, Curly, what time is it? And he pulled up his sleeves like my grandpa Castle up in West Virginia. He had about six watches up there. My grandpa was up side railroad track and sell watches. And he kept a bunch of them on. And Curly put them. He said, this one is five minutes fast every two hours. This was three minutes slow every one hour. And that one gains about ten minutes every 24 hours. And my grandpa said, well, what time is it right now? He pulled out a pocket watch and said, one o'clock. That's the way I feel about that Bible right there, buddy. And they say, well, the NIV said that. Well, the RSV said that. Well, the Living Bible said that. Well, Ellen said that. Well, what did God say? Well, that's King James say, right here is what God said. I'm telling you tonight, we believe what we believe that we have God's Word. We believe that we have God's Word. You say, well, what if we're wrong? Well, if we're wrong, ain't our fault. We just believed it. What if the other crowd's wrong? It's their fault. Because they changed it. I ain't changing one word. And when I stand it to judgment, if it's wrong, I ain't my fault. I didn't mess with it. Amen? If you mess with it and you're wrong, you'll get your name took out of the book of life. <laughs> and you're a part, rather. Amen. That's a scary thought, ain't it? I'm telling you tonight, brother, you hear me? We believe that it is God's Word. Let me tell you something. Did you know the weatherman can come on and say it's going to snow and everybody goes crazy and goes and buys milk and eggs and, and flour and sugar and everything else and goes to the grocery store and buys it and it might and it might not. You can get up and tell them the Bible said something that's never been wrong. They say, well, I don't know about that. Uh, you know what blows my mind is that people believe in all them things in magazines at the grocery store. I was at the store one day at a, a uh, pharmacy in Marion. This been years ago, but I just want to relate this little story to you. I went to the pharmacy in Marion one day. I, I was getting something for sore throat or something. I can't remember what I was doing in there. And I was lined up, ready to pay for my stuff. And as I was lined up, uh, you you, I'm, you might be more spiritual than me. And sometimes I try, but I cannot help but look down at them think might be to read the headlines. I know you say, Brother Danny, I can't. Well, I say I ain't going to. I'm standing there like that, you know, and I'm looking around, looking around, and first thing you know, I'm like that. There's one. And, and, and you, I was old midnight, and the inquirer, and all them things. I mean, I mean, I looked down, and this one captivated my attention. This has been years ago. And I looked down that thing, and I started reading it, and I said, Lord, have mercy. I read another, and I said, My soul. I read, and so I looked around, I said, I'm going to preach on that. I looked around and see if anybody was looking like that. And I got that thing and laid it over here on the counter. And I said, Lord, I hope she don't know me. And of course she did. Uh, three days later, one of our church members came up and said, Your preacher was in here the other day and bought the inquirer. I didn't, I had to explain it to them. I didn't have to, but I told the whole church about it. And I said, uh, yes, I did. And I, I laid that thing down there. I said, look, lady, I don't really believe this stuff. I, I'm going to preach on this. And I took that thing home and I wrote down the, the articles in that man. You'd be surprised at the grannies that sit around in their rocking chairs and believe every single word in the inquirer. But I tell you, if that thing says it, it's got to be right. I'm telling you, they don't make no mistakes. They maketh no mistakes. Uh, the, the, the sun and the star and, and all them over there. And I took that thing home. Here's what one of them said. One, one article said, Gypsy curse makes a man sneeze 800 times a day. I said, Lordy, mercy. I said, I got... I got a man sneezing 800 times a day. I'm telling you, I, another one said this. It said, UFO creatures now have kidnapped 268 Americans. And the number is much higher than that. I, 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 read, I read that. And, and then I read another one. And over here on the other side, it said, boy sacrifices himself to the devil. I said, my soul. I was like that fellow they sold us the other day. Cut his own head off of a chainsaw. Did y'all hear about that? That's supposedly true. Is that true? I'm telling you, brother, Marion, Marion's got some drama going on in nowadays. Man took a chainsaw on and hooked and put it on cruise control so it can just throw his neck down on it like that and cut his own head off. I, Lord, I believe I can find an easier way to do it than that, don't you? 
I mean, how few would be on that wall right over there, right there? Well, that's sad. But I read about that boy. Listen to this one. On the headline of that magazine, on the headline of that magazine, it said, woman's head falls off as she sleeps. That's what it said. And I can just imagine her, you know, I said, that's just some wistful thinking by her husband's what that is. That didn't really happen. Another one said this. Another one said, anti-age potion will keep you to alive to be 120. Mom kills seven of her, her babies because she can't afford birth control pills. Pets suffer more in a divorce than the children do. That's right. One of them said this. I saw it with my own eye. It said a baby was born singing Christmas carols. That's what it said. I said, and my mind, you know, my, I was just imagining that. So my soul, what about that? I mean, I can just imagine the doctor pulling up that little baby, just pulling out that way in the manger. Ah! Throw that thing down, man. It's demon possessed. I'll tell you something, brother. That's, that's man's work. And people believe that stuff. One of them said 13 each roaches attack humans. And these roaches got immune to this, the pesticide and stuff they sprayed them with and grow to be that long. And they was chasing cars and biting the, biting the tires on them cars and these 13 inch roaches. I thought, you'd be surprised. Oh Lord, honey, these 13 inch roaches are coming. They're out there in our yard right now. I thought I seen one. That's a possum out there in the driveway. I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. That's man's word for God. If you believe that stuff, you're about high cracked. You know what? I'm telling you something, brother. That's man's word for God's word. Amen. You know what we believe? We believe that, yea, let God be true and every Every man a liar. You know what we believe? Somebody said, well, what do you believe about abortion? We believe the Bible teaches that a baby in a mother's womb is a person. And we believe God named them. Like called Jeremiah and John the Baptist preach. We believe they're not a fetus that's attached to the body like a piece of tissue. We believe it's a human being. John the Baptist took a shout and spell in his mother's womb before he was ever born. We believe what God said, not what men say. You say, well, uh, what do you believe about uh, uh, what do you believe about shacking up? We believe that the Bible teaches marriage between one man and one woman. That's all. You can't marry your dog. Uh, you uh, you Hey, uh, somebody of the same sex, you came here. We believe what God said is right and what man said is a counterfeit. Amen. That's man's word for God's word. That's right, brother. Amen. Let me give you another counterfeit tonight quickly. I'm going to move on. Let me give you another one. All right. As I mentioned, evolution for creation. Man's word for God's word. Number three tonight, antichrist for the real Christ. The devil has Antichrist substitute for the real Christ. Now we all know and see that the mark of the beast is coming. The one world government is coming. Ladies and gentlemen, the Antichrist according to the Bible will be a Syrian Jew. He'll be a hype breed Jew. That's getting scary in light of today's political developments and the day that you and I are living in. We are living in a time that we've never been in history. And we have got to the place in America where America is willing to accept a mixed foreign, different belief, different background, different culture, different, to be the leader of America. We're getting in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe tonight that the devil is going to substitute the Antichrist when he comes will be the smoothest, slick-talking, uh, charismatic guy that the world has ever seen. He'll be, he'll be the greatest writer, the greatest composer, the greatest uh, architect that the world... He's 666. The best thing that man's ever produced. I saw a girl with a shirt on uh, here a while back. I think we was in Gatlinburg somewhere. Me and Mose went over there. It been last summer. And her uh, girl had on a shirt said 667. Little worse than evil. And I thought about 
all the rock songs. They have that number 666 stamped on it. I can show you. I may, I may show you some to you, Freddie. I got a bunch of, of rock albums of 666. Girls putting t- t- uh, scratching it, cutting it into their chest right across here. 666. That's why tattoos are so popular. They're getting the next generation ready. When the Antichrist comes, just to stamp it right there on the hand or the forehead. And so the devil will substitute the Antichrist for the real Christ. Let me show you the comparison in the Bible. If you didn't know, you'd never know the difference. As a matter of fact, most, most Bible commentators present the hot white horse rider in Revelation 6 as the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not at all. It's the Antichrist. That's how deceiving he is. Uh, in Revelation 6, man comes out on a white horse and death and hell follow him. And even the great Matthew Henry in his commentary presents that as Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the picture of a counterfeit. The devil will come. Did you know every Jew in the world, Orthodox Jew in the world tonight is looking for the Christ to come. They don't believe that Jesus was Christ. They're still looking for the Christ. So when the Antichrist comes, they'll say, the Messiah, the Messiah is finally here. And they'll believe it because he's going to sign a treaty, a seven year treaty with them and break it in three and a half years. They're going to believe that he's the Messiah. We done telling them that the Messiah's done come here and gone. But they, Jesus said this, he said, I'm coming in my Father's name and they receive me not. If another come in his own name, him they will receive. And so when the Antichrist comes, they're going to swallow his line, hook, line, and sinker. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll be just like... The Antichrist not going to come with devil horns and worshiping Satan. He's going to come as an imposter, as an imitator, as a fake. Just like Jesus is light, the devil is the angel of light. Just like Jesus is the angel of the Lord, the Antichrist would be the angel of the pit. Just like Jesus would be king of the Jews, the Antichrist would be king over the children of pride. Just like Jesus is God in the flesh, the Antichrist would be, uh, would be the devil and the God of this world in the flesh. Jesus has a bride who is a city, Jerusalem. The Antichrist has a bride who is a city, Rome. Jesus quotes scriptures. The devil quotes scriptures. Jesus preaches three and a half years. The Antichrist ministry lasts exactly three and one half years. Jesus is anointed. That's what the word Christ means. The devil, the Antichrist, will be anointed. The Antichrist. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you could not tell them apart. I'm telling you tonight, that's why the Lord said, if any man say, lo, he is here, or lo, he is there, go not after them. For as the lightning shines out of one side of heaven to the other side of heaven, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. We got the Holy Ghost in us, and when the real Christ comes, we don't, nobody don't have to say that's Him. He'll jerk us off of this planet like, like a magnet pulling us out of here, and we'll go home to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. He's the real Christ. But the Antichrist is a counterfeit. And I will tell you this, I'm through tonight. Religion for salvation. The devil will give you a good case of religion as a counterfeit for salvation. Oh, we got people has got religion. Them Muslims, them Indians, them, 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 they, some of them, most of them are dedicated stop whatever they're doing Three times a day, bow, point toward Mecca or wherever it's at, and bow. Do it. You ever seen them dudes on TV? They're all like this. Then they'll go, all at the same time. You know what that is? Religion. Religion ain't never saved nobody. Religion is something you do for God. Salvation is something God does for you. Religion is serving God. Salvation is God doing something for you that you can't do for yourself. There's a major, major difference. Religion is a counterfeit for salvation. Religion don't get you to heaven. Only salvation will get you to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to realize this evening, I hope we don't have none of that here in our church. We preach the Bible. We believe in the blood of Jesus. But there's a lot of churches, even what is known as Protestant, 
And the word Protestant comes from the word protest. And when the Catholic Church ruled the world, they called that the Dark Ages. That's very interesting, isn't it? The world went into the worst shape it's ever been in. When the Catholic, when the Pope run the world. And a lot of them guys came out like Martin Luther, like John Wesley. They protested. John Calvin came out, and there come the Presbyterian Church. John Wesley came out, and there come the Methodist Church. And Martin Luther came out, and there come the Lutheran Church. You say, where was the Baptist? They wasn't never in. You can trace all the way back, as far as you want to go, they was underground. They called them by different names, but that's why we don't call ourselves Protestant. When somebody said, are you Catholic or Protestant? Say, neither one. We never was in the Catholic Church. We didn't protest and come out. There's a straight line of Bible believers all the way back to Jesus Christ. We're neither Catholic nor Protestant. We're Bible-believing Baptists. That's always believed the Word of God. Now they called them Waldensians and they called them uh, different names and they called them while they was underground. But it's just like a stream, brother. That thing was underground for a while. You couldn't see it. But brother, it popped back up doing just fine. We never have been Catholic. We never will be Catholic. We're not pro we ain't protesting nothing. We've been preaching the Bible all these years. Brother, before there was a Pope, there was Bible-believing preachers uh, preaching the Word of God. Amen? But if you're not careful... That's why in a Lutheran church, I'm not trying to be ugly, it might be some of your kin folks. That's why in a Lutheran church, a Wesleyan church, a Methodist church, or in a lot of the churches, you still see signs of Catholicism in it. Robes, candles, spooky looking stuff. <laughs> I mean, weird acting stuff. I don't know. All kind of weird stuff like that. Big old windows with all different colors. You still see a lot of that. You know what that is? Religion. Because when Calvin came out, he brought a little Rome with him. And when John Wesley came out, he carried a little Rome with him. And it's still found in the Methodist churches tonight. And I'm going to tell you tonight, brother, that's why, that's why we're not such a big thing on crosses. The cross never touched nobody. It's who died on that cross that made the difference. Amen? The cross is a sign of a curse. The cross, brother, uh, ain't what saves us. It's the one who died. And we don't, we don't have a crucifix up here with Jesus. Uh, he ain't dead on a cross. He's alive and sitting in heaven this evening ready to come back and get us. We took all them kids from man up to... New York City a couple of times and we stopped in Washington D.C. and Alan Ryman took us in the biggest Catholic church in New York in Washington D.C. Son, it was a whopper. Lord have mercy. It plowed up rain in that thing. I mean, it was so high. It had gold, little chips of gold around. There, the area where you walk in was as big as this church. A solid, looked like, looked like precious stone pearl in the ground, on the ground where you walked on. And I remember them kids, they walked in there and, and they was holding on to each other. <laughs> like it, I was, and Corey, my youngest daughter, started crying. We said, honey, what's wrong? She said, I'm scared. I wonder what made a kid cry when he walked to church. That's weird, ain't it? They would candles around, these nuns standing around like this. It's like I was going trick-or-treating or something. I was there. You say, you shouldn't say that. I'm trying to teach you between counterfeit and the real thing. You say, well, they have a right. They sure do have a right. But the Bible don't say nothing about no Pope. The Bible don't say nothing about robe wearing priests being able to get your sins forgiven. The Bible don't say anything about honoring Mary. Alive, dead, going through Mary, petitioning Mary. That's false doctrine, folks. You're praying to Mary. What are we going to pray to Mary for? We can talk right to the Lord. They teach that if you get on the good side of Mary, she'll get on the good side of Jesus. He'll get on the good side of God and get you what you want. If you don't believe it, turn them on on the TV. They'll say, uh, Hail Mary, Mother of Grace. Remember us sinners now 
now in the moment of our death. Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace. Remember us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace. Remember, I ain't asking Mary to remember me at the hour of my death. Mary is a sinner like me and had to get saved just like I did. Amen. What I'm giving you here tonight is what we call sound doctrine. This will what will build our church. Stuff like I'm preaching tonight will make our church strong. You won't just think, know what you believe. You'll know why you believe it. Them kids run in and I told them, I said, y'all behave and act like you got some sense. And they was in there blowing candles out. And running around. I said, that's disrespectful, y'all. And the nun come up and said, you kids quit this. You kids quit this. I bet they don't act like that in your church. I said, yeah, they do too. Uh, she, I hate to say it. Uh, but, and uh, we, we went in that thing, man, it was spooky. What if I come out here next week and I had this black robe on and I read some Latin to you? I'm going to tell you something. Religion is no substitute for salvation. I heard that, heard that, told that story here just a while back, but I got to tell it again. Probably about half of you wasn't here. It illustrates my point so much, and I'm through. Years ago, listen, teenagers, visitors, the emperor of China had a had an orchestra, and they would put on big um, presentations or whatever you call it, big. Uh, Concert, yeah, something, whatever orchestras do. And they would they would have these big performances. And this one fella, he wanted to be in that thing so bad he couldn't stand it. Oh, he wanted, but he couldn't play a leg. And he talked to some of them, he said, Let me in, let me in. He said, I'll do anything. And they said, Man, you ain't no you can't violin. He said, I won't even play it. I'll just act like you'll just let me in. They said, All right, come on. So he got him an outfit, he got his violin. When they walked out, he walked out. When they took their seat, he took their seat. When they played, he just did like this. When the people applauded, they bowed, he bowed. When everybody stood, he stood. And everything went real good for a little while. One day the king came in. And the king said, I want my orchestra, one at a time, to come in and play us on love. Oh boy, he got a knot in his stomach. He said, now what am I going to do? They're going to find out I was a fake all along. And so it got closer and closer and closer his time. This one went in, that one went in, this one went in, that one went in. And about two, three people before his time, he drank poison, committed suicide. And there's where we get the old saying, he dared not face the music. You've heard that saying. He couldn't face the music. That's where it came from, that story. And rather than face the fact that he was a fake, he killed himself. I thought many, many times about how people go to church every Sunday. When we stand, they stand. When we sing, they sing. When we give, they give. When we bow our head, they bow their head. When we laugh, they laugh. When we nod, they nod. And everything looks pretty good. But one day God's going to have us all in one at a time for a solo. Oh boy. Oh boy. You ain't going to fool him then. And a counterfeit ain't going to make it. Ain't going to cut it. Ain't going to cut it. Religion for salvation. You better know that you know that you know that you know that you're saved. You say, Brother Dan, that scares me. What if I got a counterfeit? I'm not trying to make you doubt your salvation. God knows I ain't. Lord, we got enough problems that it is. Not everybody in here thinking they're lost. But I mean, you know if you've been saved. You know what makes a lot of people doubt their salvation? They won't live right. And the devil gets on them and says, well, if you was really saved, you wouldn't even be thinking this or doing this or acting like this. You probably ain't even saved. And he makes you doubt salvation. Make sure you ain't got a counterfeit and then stand on it and serve God. Yep. Hey, Amen. Let's stand. Let's stand right here.